Hello, Serge here for the Backyard Driving Range. All right, today it's not going to be a letter written in that I'm going to answer on a swing instruction or whatever, but today it's going to be, I guess, for lack of a better term, I'm going to call it a medical message from the Surge. And the reason why I'm calling it medical is I, uh, I'm going to announce, and I'll get right, right to the heart of it right now, I'm uh, basically uh, not going to be doing golf schools and private lessons for about three months. I just had... Uh, come back from the doctor a day or two ago and uh, I got a medical problem that's going to require some major surgery. Uh, simply put, I got to go back in and have open heart surgery again. So any of you that have been around for a number of years know that four years ago I was misdiagnosed. I, I did a big long daily that was put up on, on Facebook and so what I hear was had about 250,000 hits real quick where I talked about how, how four years ago I was uh, in fact, a little over four years ago, I was misdiagnosed with heart pain or over here in my chest as being esophageal spasms. It got in my re medical records that even when I went to my, my, uh, my GP one time and, and reported that I was starting to have chest pains when I was playing golf and walking up hills and things, he just said, oh, just uh, esophageal spasms, take a Pepsid. Well, it ended up not being esophageal spasms. It ended up that I was diagnosed in 2010 the day before Easter, I was giving a golf lesson to a gentleman named Dr. Rob Stoltz, who's an internist from Johns Hopkins University uh, Medical Center that came down to Charlotte to take a three, four, five hour lesson with me. And that was after I had gone through a nutrition and exercise program and, and shed about 20 pounds. And he said to me, as we were taking a lunch break, he said, you look good, Serge. How do you feel? And I said, well, you know, I feel great, except I'm getting, when I exert, I get these, these pains right here. And, 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 and it starts with a little circle and grows bigger. And, he, and, 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 and I went to my doctor and I told him and I said it's, he just said it was esophageal spasms because that was diagnosed years, two years before that when I, when I had the first pains walking up a hill at Augusta National trying to keep up with DJ and it happened. And they diagnosed it as esophageal spasms after putting me in the hospital overnight and three blood tests and three EKGs and, and doing a stress test. And he, his eyes opened up really big and he asked me a few questions basically are my parents still alive and how'd they die? And when I told him my, my dad died of basically a uh, heart attack, heart failure, and then had quadruple bypass surgery, numerous tents and everything else, he, he, I mean, he went, he just went, I'm telling you right now, you've got angina, you do not have esophageal spasms. And he started a process going from Baltimore when he got back that got me into a, car, a, a cardiologist down here and got the first test which started, which included uh, catheterization, which they actually couldn't do, so I had to go in and because uh, I was, they called me an anomaly. My lower left ventricle didn't start in the right place. Long story short, on that deal, it ended up I had double blockage. The worst one was the lower left ventricle, which is what's called the widowmaker. And realistically, I was lucky to be alive because I think, as you know, they call it the widowmaker because if you have a heart, if a man has a heart attack because of the widowmaker, usually you're dead before you hit the ground if you were standing up. So. Good Lord took care of me and, uh, and brought Dr. Stoltz to me. And every year I, I send him an email on, on April 20th, and uh, I call him my guardian angel. And so uh, I guess I had another guardian angel this year because I've been having a uh, having big problem. And this is my medical report for today for all of you. So that old video still might be out there if you want to go find it. But basically, I was having pain, and they misdiagnosed it. This time... I was not having any pain whatsoever, but what I started having was shortness of breath, okay? And I mean, uh, and it really started showing up right back on, on Village Greens over here in Inman, South Carolina, at the club where I play golf out of, the 12th hole, and there's a couple other holes that got steep hills, and number 12 has got at least about a 25, 30 degree slope that's got to be about 170, 200 yards that I have to walk up. I drive off the tee, I walk to the bottom hill, and it's all the way up till it levels off, and I started having about three or four months ago, problems of before I halfway up that hill, I started, you know, starting to breathe hard. And, and then when I finally get up to the ball, just like before, I, the pain started and I'd get to the ball and the pain would be a little bit more intense and be pounding more. Now I'm over there and I'm, I'm like this and I'm de breathing deep and, <laughs> and breathing out. And, and, and as the weeks went on, it took longer for me to catch my breath back. And then about, about uh, I'd say five weeks ago, or were somewhere around there. I actually, you probably all heard me say something about it in, in dailies. I went to Mexico, down to Mexico, and I caddied for DJ uh, in, in, a, in a, 
web.com event over there that he was playing in, at, and in Leon, Mexico, which is at least a minimum of 6,000 feet up, and, and boy, I had a tough time over there. There was like four holes on the backside in a row, three or four in a row that, that were like 20, 30 degree slopes straight up for like 350 yards. And so, man, I mean, it was brutal. And I got to the ball, and I'd, I'd put DJ's bag down, and I'd walk over to the side, and I'd be over there. And, I mean, I'd have to stand. I'd leave the bag there, and i walked 20 feet away because I'm over there <sighs> trying to get my breath back. And, I mean, by the time he did all his yardages and, and pulled the club and hit the shot and was already walking, I'm still over there trying to find my breath. So, uh, fortunately, I made it through that, got back here, went and saw my GP. And I said, I told him, I said, I think I got, remember now, I had no pains. All that kept happening was I started getting what felt like, I guess the best described as a pressure right here in my upper stomach. Sort of almost like as if you were getting ready to burp and you, and you could start to feel that pressure building up. It was like that. But I never got one speck of pain anywhere. Just that pressure and, and, and start trouble breathing. So I go to my GP and I say, I think there's something wrong with my lungs. I think you need to check me out. So I did a pulmonary test where I blew into this thing, and, and then he sent me for an I went back and got an x-ray, and I came back out, and he looked at everything, and he said, your pulmonary test was really good. And he said, your, uh, your, your chest is nice and clean. There's no problems. And so then he said to me, uh, how long has it been since you've seen your cardiologist? I said, two years at least. He said, well, I think it's time to go visit him. So they make me an appointment. I get in there about four or five days later, and I go see my cardiologist, a guy named Dr. Mo doctor named Dr. Mobley. And so I go in there and they do an EKG and they do uh, blood pressures and EKG and blood pressure is really good and they ask me a whole lot of questions, blah, 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 blah. He comes in and talks to me and he says, he says, okay, well, it's been a long time. I think we need to do a stress test. So they booked me for a stress test a few days later or a week later. So I show up for the stress test, got my sneakers on, and they do what they call an echocardiogram first. And, you know, they put the plugs all over you and you just lay down and you just keep breathing. And then he came back and saw it. And he starts looking at it, and I'm sitting there and with my sneakers on, and uh, right, right to the side of me is, the, is the, the treadmill to go on, and his nurse is sitting right there, and after about 30 seconds to a minute, he looks over at his nurse and he says, uh, Mr. Trahan won't be doing a stress test today. Go check out uh, the schedule for catheterizations and book him one as soon as you can. And he looked at me and he says, look at this. And he looked at it and he showed it and he said, he's saying, you see that, 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 that little thing pumping? That's your aortic valve. You have aortic stenosis. For layman's terms, that means I have calcification buildup on my aorta, on my aorta, and it looked like it was really bad. He said so. He had to go in. He wanted a catheterization to go in and check it. He makes the comment to me that you had some four years ago, a little bit of calcification four years ago, but it shouldn't. It was it was not enough to even worry about. And even if you live 40 or 50 more years, it should never be a problem for you. But now it looks like it's, it looks it looks like to be a pretty bad problem. I got to go see it for first hand inside. So a week later, I'm doing I'm in there getting the catheterization. This time they could get in, and they looked at it. And he comes downstairs and he says to me and my wife Susan, he says, uh, "You got you got moderate to severe cal uh, severe, and I think it's actually way past severe." So he sends me to the heart surgeon, Dr. Leyland, a previous heart surgeon I had. So right now they're looking at that I got to get a I got to get a heart valve replacement. Now from what I understand, heart valve replacements can be done through an incision or something, and they don't have to do like they did with a bypass, cut me and cut open my sternum and everything else, which makes major major surgery and a big time recovery period. So he's looking at the the stenosis and he's uh, the the, cat, the catheter and he uh, not the catheter but the uh, the valve the aortic valve and he says look at all this stuff it's really bad he says look it, it barely opens up and it doesn't close fully anymore so you can have you can have the medic, uh, the, the, uh, the man-made one or you can have a pig's valve or whatever he said I don't like the man-made one because they got to put you on if you get that one it's guaranteed for uh, two lifetimes but you, 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 go, you have to go on blood thinners and he says that's I don't like putting people on blood thinners if you don't have to for the rest of your life and plus, my wife Susan told me there's a good chance if you get one of those mechanic metal ones, you you can hear them you can hear them clicking when they open and clicking when they close, and you hear it for the rest of your life. So it's like you just hear tick tick, you know, click 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 click. So that that didn't sound too inviting. But anyways, uh, as he's looking at the the catheterization, he starts moving over, and he said, and 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 he said, yeah, Dr. Moby told me to really check out your veins over there on the other side. So he starts off checking out the ones he did 
the two bypasses he did, he says, man, these look great. They're, they're nice and clean, and, they're, and there's no buildup or anything in them. He says, you're eating healthy, you're staying healthy, that's good. And he switches over to the other side of the heart, and all of a sudden he looks and says, ooh, this isn't good. Now, by the way, I had already, I had already asked him about a golf school I'm supposed to be doing next week in Chicago, and could I go? And he said, and this is only when he's focusing on the, on the heart valve, thinking that's the only really problem. And he says, yeah, no problem. Heart valve won't kill you, but take it easy. No heavy lifting, no strenuous stuff. I said, yeah, there's assistance that can help me, and Doc will be there uh, to help me. And I said, he said, fine, no problem. Then he gets over here, and he starts looking. He says, oh, no wonder, no wonder that Dr. Mulvey wanted me to look here. He said, no, nope. he said, this is bad, really bad. He said, you're blocked over 90%. He said, I rescind that thing. From, you're not going anywhere except to your operating room really quick. He said, this can kill you. The heart valve wouldn't. So I went from a heart valve and, and some type of less invasive surgery to going back in. I'm going to have to get cracked again, so I'll become a member of the Zipper Club a second time. And I got a minimum of three months uh, out, so uh, out of action, where, I, where I won't even be able to, to, to make a one hit into the net. Okay, So uh, that's my message today. I'm going to be gone for about three months. I hopefully have enough um, uh, dailies in the can. I might try to get a few more in there. So dailies might not be going for uh, uh, at full bore seven days a week, uh, but we do have a great, uh, a, a great uh, bunch of them all in, uh, in the archives, so we have some there. So you'll be getting dailies, maybe not quite on such a regular basis, but they, uh, uh, I won't be able to be answering any questions that's coming in. So if you all want to send the questions in, see, keep sending them in, and I'll just keep piling them up, and they'll give me plenty of stuff to do future dealings on because I, I love getting yours, the messages from you. But the last thing I want to again re reiterate is, is, is that I think, I think the good Lord's blessed me with a second chance because I could have had a heart attack, especially out there in that high elevation down in Mexico when I was canning for DJ, and it could probably, if I had a heart attack, as bad as this blockage, there's a good chance that I could be a stroke or a heart attack and I could be paralyzed or maimed or whatever and or dead. And so fortunately I'm standing here. My surgery is going to be uh, four days from now. I go in at 8 o'clock 8 o'clock on the 17th uh, to, for the surgery. Dr. Leyland's told me it's a minimum of five hours because he's got two, the two things to do and naturally the uh, bypass is the most important uh, and then, and then the, uh, the valve replacement. So but the point is, is that I just want to warn you all. I have been blessed twice so far. Hopefully, none of what you, what I'm going to tell you, I've already told you, but I'm going to reiterate again. The pain, if you've got any pains at all, anywhere around in here, or even sometimes in your extremities, go learn the four warning signs of, of the heart attacks. You can Google that on the, on, on the, on the, on the, on a website. In many of those, I think it's like, it's got something like, it's a four letter word that they've made up and it starts by your mouth changes. It's M-A-S-T-S-O, mouth, uh, uh, arms, mouth, arms, uh, speech, and then uh, something else, uh, whatever the last word, the letter is. Learn those. You get anything like that, don't take any chances. Get to the doctor. Get to your GP. Then have him confirm, you know, get you to a cardiologist, and the cardiologist starts doing the tests. In this case, I had no pain. All I had was this little bit of pressure that came up here, and, 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 and not breathing well. And I'm thinking here it's my lungs. And I took way too long to get in and see my doctor, and my GP, who, who recognized that when, when he checked me, the pulmonary thing, and, 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 the, and, and the chest x-ray, there was no problems there. Hey. I guess he knew right away the next place to go was that was that, that beautiful little heart in the middle of our in the middle of our chest here, and boom, there's the problem again. So whether you, whether it's whether it's misdiagnosis or, or just in my case the second time, not even thinking that because there was no pain, it couldn't it wasn't the heart. Here again, I, I, I fooled myself that time, and but fortunately I've lucked out and I'm going in and I'm going to be taken care of. So this is just I guess a medical message but also a medical warning medical for your information just pain isn't always the answer go get go get that first report and, and maybe sometimes go get the second go get a second opinion whatever but heart problems aren't just pain as i just found out and i just reiterated to you so please take care of yourselves and uh i'm taking care of myself now so for now i guess i'll be saying i'll be as I always say, I'll be talking to you soon. Well, I'll be talking to you in about three months. Okay, maybe a little bit sooner if they'll let me come on and at least talk. Okay, so maybe I might be able to start dailies before then, but I'm not doing that till my, till my cardiologist says it's okay. 
All right, so for the search for today, it's been great talking to you, and I'll hopefully I'll be talking to you as soon as I can. So take care of yourselves, and because i got to go take care of myself so that I can come back and be speaking to you again from the backyard driver range. That's it for today, and I'll be speaking with you all again soon.